Hello everyone, welcome to Facebook live sessions. I hope you are well and safe. I am Mohammad Rajamia, Managing Director of TCL Global. I'm joining you from Portsmouth, UK. TCL Global is an education consultancy firm based in Portsmouth, UK. We have five offices around the world. Our head office is based in Portsmouth, UK. We have our branch office in Saudi Arabia, Riyadh. We have our branch office in Kuwait City. We have two offices in Bangladesh, Dhaka and Silet. TCL Global is working more than 70 UK universities. We are officially representing 70 UK universities. And we helped more than 3,000 students last year. We are the largest education consultancy firm based in southeast of England. Our service is completely free of charge. I have a guest with me today, Jordan Reid. Senior International Officer for GCC and South Asia and joining from Salford. Thank you very much, Jordan, for joining us today. Thank you very much, Mohammed. It's a pleasure to be online and have the opportunity to speak with students from across the world and to tell them all about the benefits of joining the University of Salford. I hope you're all well. Thank you. Thank you. So it would be nice to start with a little bit overview about the Salford University, then we can go uh, directly some more uh, more specific question as well as we'll um, take the question from the audience the audience who already joined please uh, share the sessions and uh, please put your comments and we'll try to answer your questions yes um, Jordan uh, if we start with the overview of the Salford University then we can go for more specific questions yeah thank you okay okay brilliant so the University of Salford uh, is based in the north of the UK so quite some distance from, from Portsmouth, where Mohammed is based right now. Um, so based um, very close to Manchester, in the, in the greater Manchester region. Um, personally, I can walk from the University of Salford main building into Manchester city centre in about 20, 20 minutes time, um, which shows how, how close it is to the city centre. Um, for me, it's a perfect opportunity, a perfect place for students to study if they want the best of both worlds. Um, you know, the university is a campus based university in Salford. Um, so, you know, it's more relaxed. Um, easygoing way way of living and studying whereas then just on the doorstep in manchester city center you have that busy city center with all the shops restaurants sporting venues and um, etc and um, so you know where i talk about really best of both worlds and um, for, for your study options uh, the the university itself um, has four schools within it so the Salford business school so covering all all types of courses across accounting business management um, uh, those sorts of programs through to the school of arts and media and um, so again film journalism uh, fashion those type of programs music and dance performance etc as well uh, into the School of Sciences, Engineering and Environment, so across all engineering modules, into sort of uh, biosciences um, and, and construction programs, and then finally the School of Health and Society as well, so across nursing programs, uh, psychology, physiotherapy, uh, so that covers those four schools. Alongside that as well, and I'm sure we'll come in and touch upon this as well, is that we also have the um, Salford Languages Department as well. So technically the fifth school um, covering all English language testing, uh, pre-sessional programs and the International Foundation Year as well. Okay, thank you, uh, Jordan. I mean, city itself, Manchester, you know, I mean, we have a biggest two football team there, Manchester United and Manchester City, you know, I think, I mean, it's very popular city and uh, very popular clubs as well, you know, um, and, uh, so if you if you tell a little bit more about the city, you know, Manchester, you know, that would be great as well, you know? Yeah, definitely. I mean, Manchester to me is, you know, is London on a smaller and less busy scale. It is still a very busy city, um, mm. you know, but all the restaurants, shops, um, venues, music theatres, et cetera, that you'd see, you know, on a larger scale in London, you'll mm. see in Manchester. Um, but not just on a smaller scale, but also on a cheaper scale. You know, the cost of living in, in London is, is pretty pricey, to be honest, <laughs> very expensive. Um, you know, the more north you go, and especially around the Manchester region, it is a cheaper way, a cheaper way of living. Um, that being said, you know, the, it's not going to be 
to be cheap to live in Manchester city city centre. However, if you do venture out to the, you know, to the greater Manchester region towards Salford, again, the cost of living is reduced even more. So, you know, you have all the benefits of, of that busy city centre life, um, yeah. but at a fraction of the price. You know, you mentioned there about Manchester United, Manchester City. Um, there's actually seven uh, professional football clubs in the greater Manchester region, um, yeah. you know, are operating across the four top divisions. Um, Increasingly, the num the students that I meet um, out out uh, you know across across the world, whether that is in Bangladesh or in Kuwait, you know they're speaking to me about Manchester City and Liverpool. Uh, whereas maybe five ten years ago, it would have always been Manchester United that the team, yeah. Yeah. the team everyone's asking about. And also um, the city itself, and the neighbouring city, you know the the Leeds. We got the Liverpool, you know we got the Birmingham. So yeah. it's like a, another big big cities actually very nearby. And also yeah. the Manchester, um, the airport. They have a, like mm -hmm. a direct flight. Some of the uh, the Middle East countries, as well as I know that recently Bangladesh also started the direct flight from Manchester to Bangladesh. Absolutely, yes. The the airport itself, um, you know, less than thirty minutes, forty minutes on the uh, from on the train from from mm. um, the train station at Salford, um, let alone Manchester Centre as well. Um, you can obviously see the map behind me here um, and how centrally located Manchester is. So just where the the dot is there um, mm. is is the University of Salford, um, and as you can see, you know, just in within. Uh, a one hour radius, you would have the, the other major cities of Leeds, Liverpool, maybe an hour and 15, you would yeah. get you to Birmingham, Leicester, Leicester as well. Uh, and it is just two hours on the train from London city centre. So yeah. yes, you know, students are coming to study in the UK. Of course, they want to go see Big Ben. They want to go see the Houses of Parliament. Well, of yeah. course, students can do that in a weekend. They could travel down on a Friday, two hours on the train, spend the weekend in London, and then return back for their for their classes on the Monday as well. I think there is a, like a direct connections and fast train connection from yeah. London. Not only the London when I travel from the Portsmouth, you know, then I took that from the Southampton direct train uh, to the Manchester, you know. Yeah. So the communication wise, actually, the, there's a fast track and other way yeah. as well. Uh, as I mentioned, that internationals many international destinations there is a direct flight from the Manchester airport so a student exactly. doesn't need to come to London Heathrow or Gateway to climb no. you know no. so I think no. it's a huge advantage for the international students exactly and even to the north as well you know up to Scotland to Edinburgh uh, yeah. you know two and a half hours three hours on the train and and you're in Scotland it's another country that that students can tick off their I visited list fantastic fantastic Thank you, um, Jordan. Um, it's really uh, very useful information. So, so um, the viewers who already joined, um, just uh, with me, we have a Jordan aid from the Sorbonne University. We are discussing about the Sorbonne University and the courses, entry requirements, and we will go through shortly with the foundation courses, um, UG, PG, and PhD. Please do stay with us. If you have any questions, uh, please um, um, put a question through our uh, comment box. We'll try to answer your questions. And um, about the TCL Global, our head office is based in UK, Portsmouth, where I am based. My team is based. We have office in Saudi Arabia and Riyadh City. We have office in Kuwait City. And we have uh, two offices in Bangladesh, in Dhaka, Dhanmundi, and in Silet City. So our team is working from home. And if you want to connect with our team, you can find our details our office details, contact details in our website, in our social media pages. So we have a pages for the TCL Global Bangladesh page. We have a TCL Global International page. And also we have TCL Global Middle East and TCL Global North Africa page. So please follow us and, and please contact our team. Our team can help you with the admissions. And we are official partner of Salford University. So uh, Jordan, if we go through with the foundation, I know the foundation is very popular especially Middle East, we have seen that uh, many Kuwaiti students and Saudi students are studying there. Uh, yeah. It would be great to know a little bit about the intakes of the foundations who wants to, who just finished the high school and how many intakes, how's the entry requirement for foundation students, for foundation yeah. students. 
Okay, yeah, so the International Foundation Year uh, run at the University of Salford, as you mentioned, is very popular, especially across the Middle East, across the Gulf. We have um, a really thriving community, um, which makes it a great place for not only for, for the study and for the students, but also for that social element as well. Uh, and, you know, the, the students that we do get joining from, from those regions put on some of the best um, events on campus socially as well in terms of you know tasting food hearing the different music and the different mm -hmm. cultures as well it's a really great great opportunity for students to get involved in that side of things as well um, in terms of the international foundation year we have a variety of streams um, obviously depending on, on which program um, the student wants to ultimately end up in for their for their undergraduate degree um, so it might be if you if you're looking to study um, for example, uh, engine, an engineering program, then you'd come on to, to the maths and physics um, and uh, international foundation year stream. And um, so when you when you apply, obviously, you'd make the application and you'd be allocated to the, to the relevant international foundation year stream for you. The, the main the, the next intake um, uh, currently, obviously, the, the situation is is somewhat challenging at the minute, and I'm sure we'll touch upon that very soon. Uh, the May, the intakes for the International Foundation Year would be September um, and and January for some of the streams as well. Um, okay. But to be honest, the largest intake that we do have would be the September the September intake. Uh, in terms of the entry requirements for the Foundation Year, obviously, it would depend where the students are applying from. Um, but generally, you know, if our for example, if a student was coming from, uh, say, from from Q8 um, and done the, the Tanawia, if if the standard undergraduate entry requirement was say eighty uh, percent or seventy five percent, then the international foundation year would be ten percent less than this. Okay, so that's why a number of the students do do have to go down the international foundation year route, and that's also because obviously for, for UK students, for uh, students like myself who studied in the UK, uh, we actually do thirteen years of study before we can we can enrol into to universities. Um, so that's why you know in other countries where it's just the twelve years of study, um, in some places the international foundation year is that additional year to mm. top students up to to undergraduate level studies as well also jordan um i know that is the 4.5 isn't it the ielts requirements yeah yes yes so we have we have the english language requirements as well um that would range from from around 4.5 to 5 5.0 in in some of the, the streams as well okay fantastic and um, so the who is studying in the september time they will be finishing the may june time correct Yes, correct. Yeah. And the January time, the students, if they study in the January, that will finish in August. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But the, the, the actual study period is not if you start in January, it's not that you would have uh, less study time or less contact hours with with the with the academics or anything like this. Um, so there's nothing to be worried about in terms of that. You know, it's still the same semesters, the same teaching programs, the same assessment methods as well. It's just an alternative, flexible intake for students. Um, when I last time I saw that the tuition fee is very low, you know, how much the tuition fee for the um, the uh, for the foundation course roughly? Average? Yes. So the international foundation year uh, would roughly be around ten thousand to eleven thousand um, pounds, oh. Great British pounds for the year, which is you know competitive. Uh, yeah. It is, it okay. is low. It okay. is low for students. And yeah, yeah. um, so another be another bonus for the students there as well. Okay. Yes, uh, viewers, if you are actually finish your high school certificate, if you finish your high school education, please contact our team. We can apply for you foundation at Salford University. You can contact our offices around the world. Um, so our service is completely free of charge. Our colleague can actually apply. Uh, you can apply through our um, the colleagues and uh, our team, and they, they will be they will help you with the applications. So um, the, about the foundation, the progression degree is pretty much all of the majors progressions degree if they finish the foundation. Yes, to be honest, um, the majority of our the, the majority of programs that we offer at undergraduate level are, do have um, an entry point through through the international foundation year, and the only. There's some exceptions currently um, within the School of Health and Society, and that's just due to the placement um, methods and the you know the the placement requirements for those programs. Um, so, for example, if a student was looking to study uh, physiotherapy, 
um, then that's that's just one example of a, a an undergraduate degree that we don't currently offer the International Foundation Year for. But the great thing um, about applying through TCL Global is that they, you know, you you guys do work with um, other universities, other centres that would be able to provide a, a, a foundation program, and then that foundation program could lead to the undergraduate study at the University of Salford as well. Okay, fantastic. Okay, so if we go now like undergraduate, so undergraduate courses, three years, is there any placement for undergraduates? So if this student wants to do the placement year? And yeah. yeah, yes, definitely. So again, it varies from course to course. Uh, and I know we've been quite um, quite ranging here in these discussions. Um, mm -hmm. But in general, a, a lot of the programs that are offered at the University of Salford do offer the students um, the opportunity of doing a placement type sandwich year, um, mm -hmm. especially within the School of um, Sciences, Engineering and Environment, mm -hmm. um, and also across uh, Salford Business School as well. Um, the University of Salford was actually the first university um, in the UK to mm -hmm. introduce placement years. Um, okay. And it's something that, that we're very, very proud of. And it's something that although many universities now are offering placement years and those type of opportunities, um, industry connections, industry links, uh, opportunities to, to work and progress um, your studies to, into your career paths is something that the University of Salford is very proud of. Um, and every programme that we offer, even if there's not a placement year involved, there will be some type of industry connection, some type of industry links. Now, whether that is having people from the industry coming in and doing guest lectures or coming in and actually um, writing the modules, then that's just an example of how we engage the, the industry in, in all of our programmes. And, so, and that's making sure that students are actually prepared not just to graduate and have a certificate to say, I'm a graduate of this subject, but actually to say, I'm a graduate of this of this program, and I've also got this experience where I've in you know I've interacted with the industry in this way, and I've got that in um, in um, that side of things as well. Mm. Okay, thank you. Um, for undergraduate, um, is there like a direct application or the UCAS application? Yeah. Process. So, so currently the undergraduate applications would have to be processed via U the UCAS system, um, okay. which obviously is something that I know your your colleagues are, are very familiar with. Um, yeah. And for students, if if it looks a bit confusing, what I would say to to them uh, to to your students is speak to the counsellors. They will have processed many many undergraduate uh, UCAS applications in the in uh, previously, and it, you know they'll help you. They'll talk you through that process. We got one question. Can take. Can you please ask it? Is there any chance of stopping issuing cash? Uh, so, so they're saying that, especially like the um, whether they will be like stopping the cash because of the COVID nineteen. I think maybe that is uh, mean by the Kamal. Okay, so I guess we can come to uh, like. Okay, so I've, yeah, I've got the live comments up here now. Um, and yeah. so in terms, and I guess I can give a bit of a coronavirus COVID-19 yeah. update now. It's probably yeah, it'll, it'll be great to know as well. So what will be the like advice from you as well that student actually considering to apply or already applied for the September intake? Uh, yes, Jordan, please. Yeah. Yeah, of course. So in terms of the, the times that we find ourselves in, obviously they are they are very difficult. They're very uncertain. There's a lot of questions that we don't know. And there's a lot of planning that is going into place for scenario A or scenario B or scenario C, right the way to probably scenario Z, because we just do not know what, what the situation is going to be like, not only in the UK in two months, three months time, but also across the world as well. And yeah. um, what I would say is, what the university is trying to do and what we are trying to do is just keep students as up to date as possible. We have a dedicated page on our website, um, which is updated um, as regularly as daily, uh, as soon as there is an update, whether that's from the university or from, from the wider UK, we'll be updating that web page. So if you go to salford.ac.uk um, forward slash international, you'll be able to see that. Um, but in terms of the processes, the university is closed currently and staff like myself, you know, we're and, and admissions colleagues, academics, everybody is in a working from home situation, very much like at, at TCL. Um, but that doesn't mean that work has stopped or that we're not processing applications, we're not making offer letters, uh, and even that we're that we're not making 
uh, issuing CASIS. That's definitely not the case, and we are still working ahead towards the next in intake of September. Um, that being said, there are lots of discussions going on across you know, senior levels, as there are at all universities, to, as I mentioned, to, um, to plan ahead and to, to look at the different options um, and what may need to happen in future. Um, but no, we definitely are still, we will still be issuing CASIs. Um, the issue obviously being that they can't be used, they can't be, um, can't be utilised until 90 days before the course start date anyway. Um, the course start date currently for, for the majority of the programmes would be, on the offer letter would show as 21st of September 2020. Okay. So that would be sort of June time that the CAS, the CAS process would, would be beginning anyway. Um, but if there are to be any updates on that matter, then we of course will be communicating with all our applicants um, and, and offer holders as well. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, John. Yes, uh, viewers. Um, if you have any any questions, um, you can contact our team in Riyadh, in Riyadh office, and you can contact our Kuwait office, and also the UK office where I'm based, and also the, our colleague based in Bangladesh, in Dhaka and Silet, uh, about the the situation, and uh, and you can get up to date information from our colleagues. Um, so thank you very much, Jordan. Um, so if we can go through about the PG um, postgraduate uh, application. Yeah as well as the the tuition fees is there any scholarship for the uh, the pg courses please yeah yeah so um postgraduate um you know pg programs and um, that have been pop that are popular across especially across the regions that have been mentioned today um would um cover across uh, sulfur business school so we have a uh, masters in international business in uh, management in digital marketing digital business and uh, also there's a, a new program for September 2020 mm -hmm. intake, which is going to be the MSc FinTech as well. So obviously yeah. something that is becoming very, very popular across the world currently is that um, FinTech and the use of IT in, in financial planning. Um, also, you know, moving in across other schools in terms of the popular programs there, we have um, Masters in nursing programs for the health health school in media psychology as well, which is actually the only program of its kind in yeah. in um, in Europe, um, mm -hmm. and then across um, the um, engineering uh, sciences engineering environment program, uh, mm -hmm. we have. Um, Masters in project management, in construction, uh, data science, cybersecurity type programs as well. Um, and across all of the schools, we have a, a range of scholarships that, that are on offer for students. We, oh. in terms of the scholarships, um, mm. we have, and especially for the postgraduate programs, so we have a, a range of academic scholarships, okay? okay? And when students make the application, and they can make the application um, with us, um, uh, direct using a PDF form that we have um, or the online system. Uh, again, your counsellors will help them with that. Um, but when they make the application using their their um, educational qualifications that they have and any experience uh, experiences and the CV that are submitted as the application, they would automatically be assessed for the academic scholarships, okay? Oh. And this can uh, discount the tuition fees anywhere from £2,000 to about £3,500, okay? okay. Uh, the tuition fees do vary from around £13,000 to about £16,000 for postgraduate. Um, mm -hmm. But again, with those scholarships, a lot of our students and offer holders can move closer to sort of £11,000, uh, yeah. £12,000 for the fees as well, which again is, is, is very promising for the students. Uh, any deadline, Jordan, for applying for a scholarship? So in terms of uh, the application deadlines, for the academic scholarships, it would it would just um, liaise with the application deadline um, because see. obviously they are automatic when, when the students make that application. Um, there are deadlines to meet conditions as well. So make uh, deposit payments and to submit bank mm -hmm. statements, submit, uh, uh, no, to submit English language qualifications um, and references, for example, which I can see there's a question there about that. Um, uh, in the in the chats as well yeah. um so it would mainly just align with the conditions deadlines yeah as well. um for the postgraduate, um the course i know that there is a um, september intake 
January yeah. as well, some courses. And there is March intake, isn't it? Some courses offering in March. So, so we we used to offer the March intake. Um, the March intake has now um, actually ceased. Um, so, it, but that is just um, fresh fresh news there. So, um, yeah. but that is something that Salford is is renowned for. Is you know the flexible intakes. Um, mm. So we'll have we'll have the uh, September. We'll mm. have the January. Um, and then we, we may have the June one next year as well. Okay. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. Um, about the course duration, it's normally like a one year. Is there any um, placement with the master's courses? Uh, so, again, this would vary from from school. Um, mm -hmm. For the um, the course, the PG programs in the School of Science, Engineering, Environment, the mm -hmm. courses tend to be about 15 months in duration, 14 to 16 months in duration in sort of three trimesters. Um, there's not um, a, a placement as such. However, mm -hmm. the students do get that industry connections, as I've mentioned. So, for example, for the MSc Data Science program, all students have the opportunity to work on a three month live project, which yeah. is actually something that is set by by somebody in the industry by an organization in the, in the industry and that's what students do actually have the opportunity of working on that as a live project um, in terms of the business school um, and the sulfur business school and the, the PG programs there they are just one year in so 12 months in duration from start to finish however um, as part of the fi as a final project um, we have something called the industry collaboration project okay, okay? And this gives students the opportunity for their final project, instead of just doing a dissertation, which is obviously um, the way that a lot of universities work for their final final grading, mm -hmm. you actually have students have the opportunity of either doing the dissertation, mm -hmm. of doing the an entrepreneurship module, so actually in, um, exploring a startup opportunity, um, mm -hmm. still a piece of writing involved in that as well, but it's mm -hmm. something that they would want to work on. Um, or doing a paid work placement okay. um, for six months or an unpaid um, internship as well. Okay. So there are those opportunities within the PG programs as well. Fantastic. Um, if we touch um, a bit about the PhD, because uh, as you know, the special for Middle East students, we get lots of inquiries of the PhD and they um, ask for them, applying for them. So what is the, the right um, advice would be for them? Um, should we should they contact the directly to the supervisors, then they get, submit the application once they um, get the signal from the supervisor, or is better to go to the normal uh, application process? I think it's always good to have to have that initial conversation. Um, you know, if there are if there are inquiries and students have a summary of, of you know what what they're proposing, mm -hmm. um, then to, to contact yourselves obviously in the first place. And yeah. if your counselors want to contact me for for my um opinion on who would be good to approach for this yeah. because about you know the phd it's all about finding that right match between the student and the supervisor and yeah. and making sure that there's there's going to be the good connections there um so that that would be my advice for, for students that are studying at a phd level okay thank you thank you uh, thank you viewers who already joined uh, please do it and if you have any question please um, drop your question to our comment box and we'll try to answer you i'm joining you from portsmouth uk jordan is joining from manchester area and the colleague actually uh, we have a colleagues based in riyadh saudi arabia we have a colleague based in kuwait and we have a colleague based in bangladesh dhaka and Silet. So if you have any questions, if you want to apply Salford University, our colleagues, our team can help you. So um, about the scholarship we have pretty much actually covered, is the scholarship is a similar amount for uh, undergraduate, postgraduate and PhD or different? Yeah, so it, it's similar in terms of the academic scholarships, um, you know, ranging from sort of two to four, uh, well, two to 3,500, uh, and they, they're the automatic scholarships. Also, for students applying from from certain regions, um, they would also be considered for the regional based scholarships. Again, that's based on academic merit and previous experience. Mm -hmm. All students have the opportunity to also apply for the Salford International Excellence Award. Mm -hmm. OK, but this is something that students have to apply for after they've received an initial offer. OK, and details of that would be within the offer letter. Um, mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a simple application process online and mm -hmm. students just have to answer two, two allocated questions um, 
similar, I guess, to the the SOP, the personal statement, in terms of why are they, why are students, why are you choosing this course at the University of Salford, and how is your background, your previous experience, going yeah. to help? to progress on campus um, you know that's that type of question and um, you know obviously the quality of, of uh, the, the submission is assessed by the scholarships panel along with any previous experience and any other demo um, any other skills qualities that have been demonstrated in the application and students can be awarded up to five thousand pounds in tuition fee discount as a result of that award so i'd strongly encourage students to apply for that as well but you can only apply once you are an offer holder and um, if you have already been awarded a scholarship one of the academic scholarships or the regional school based uh, yeah academic school based uh, scholarships or the regional scholarship then whichever amount is higher then that would be applied not both of them Okay, okay, thank you. Okay. Yes, uh, viewers, if you want to be, um, you want to touch with the Jordan or if you want to speak with the Jordan, um, so he'll be available uh, available in June and July time. Please contact our team. We can arrange a um, face to face uh, meeting with our colleagues from University Jordan. And if you have a specific question or anything, um, and we can arrange this meeting, please. And we are hoping that we'll run our uh, virtual fair in june and july time so please contact our team and i'm sure that our team will be able to help you thank you um, about the internal test and uh, alternative test as well as uh, moi uh, the video instruction so um what actually are the options actually for the students please? Yeah, yeah okay so obviously you know in these challenging times especially uh we're getting lots lots of inquiries on a daily basis from students concerned worried that for example they can't meet the conditions on their offer because the the school the college is closed or they and they can't get their final grades or they can't obtain the academic reference that is required or even the english english language qualification and um, the university of salford has been very proactive in ensuring that and appreciative um, and understanding that you know students are finding these these conditions very hard to meet now obviously there are still requirements that are are needed for for um, visa purposes you know for compliance re reasons and um, so things like the english language testing students are still needing to 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 demonstrate that currently what would be accepted uh, as alternatives uh, from the ielts if the ielts testing centers are closed um, we're accepting the TOEFL online home edition, um, which is an online test. And also, um, we've recently, very recently, just accepted the Duolingo online oh, test as well. Yeah, um, yeah. So that's something that I know a lot of um, other universities are accepting as well. So we're accepting this. Um, however, we are also going to be running our own Salford Languages online English language test as well. Oh. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. If students are, and this would... Um, this would run parallel with the IELTS um, framework in terms of assessing the reading, writing, speaking and listening elements of, as well. The, the details for that test, uh, the Salford Languages test, um, are just being finalised and we're hoping to have, have um, those final details within the, the next week or two as well. So if there's any students that would like to be considered for that test and would like to be put on, on the list to receive, it, receive information about this, then please contact your, your TCL Global Counselor who will then contact myself and we'll add you to the list as well. Okay. Yes, sure, okay. sure. Um, Is there a charge for the test? That is what's being finalised currently. Um, so that that's put to, putting me on the spot there. Um, okay. We we're, we're trying to make sure if there is any fee at all that it would be minimal. Um, yeah. You know, it's not it's not going to be hundreds of pounds, for example. Um, but you know, please, even if even if you're not a hundred percent sure if you want to take the Salford test, it, you may as well be on the list at least to receive that information. And then when the price comes out, when the dates come out. If it works for you, great, go ahead and book it. If not, then you will have the other options as well, I'm sure. Okay, we've got um, another question. Um, how much I need to pay to get a cash for foundation? Um, for the for the foundation program, so it would, it would vary. But if we went off, for example, um, and it would depend what, if you were awarded any scholarship, for example, if you were, 
if your fees came out at let's say ten thousand four hundred pounds for the international foundation year it's slightly yeah. higher than this but let's say you you had some some scholarship so if it was ten thousand four hundred pounds then you would need to pay the four thousand four hundred pounds as a deposit mm. okay so that would show a six thousand six thousand pounds remaining okay for the for the cas purposes of the cas then you would need to show the remaining tuition fees so six thousand pounds mm. plus also the living fees in the uk which is set by the uk vi that yeah. is currently at one thousand and fifteen pounds per month for the nine months so it would be nine thousand one hundred and thirty five pounds plus the six thousand so it would be just over fifteen thousand pounds um i would probably um, advise, you know, aim towards the £16,000 just to make sure that the students have that buffer there as well. Um, if you showed that amount in, in uh, your bank statement or in your in, in your bank or your parent's bank account um, for the 28-day period, then that should that should yeah. be enough for the CAS purposes. Okay, thank you. Yeah. There are other questions here. Um, so please, uh, um, Lucas, contact our team if you want to more information. If you want to apply for the Salford University, our team will help you to for the applications. Um, also for foundation, uh, do you allow English test instead of IELTS? In terms of other English tests that we accept? No, no, it's a do you allow any English test instead of the IELTS for foundation course? So we do, we do offer we have we have some alternatives um mm. it obviously it depends wh where the student is applying from um yeah. because some of the ify it would need to be the uk vi ielts um, and that's obviously what what we are exploring to see whether for compliance reasons this our own english language test would would be an alternative as well okay what i would say is the university and um, the admissions team the self languages my team as well we're all ex we're all keeping well up to date with the situations in different countries across the world and you know if it's not looking that that the testing centers are opening in time we will be aware of this and we are putting plans into place to to offer different routes in for students yeah okay thank you yes um we got another question here um okay due to covid 19 situation support precisional course will it start just in time or delay okay so again where i mentioned before and um, that we are we have some different alternatives really and um, there are a few different scenarios that have been considered um, and if it, it depends if you're Saeed, if if you are an offer holder and um, then you should definitely contact um your counselor who contact us and we can we can update you on your own personal um offer and what the situation is for yourself um, but there's a few different um, routes that the university will go down depending if travel restrictions are lifted or not mm -hmm. um, we are we're looking to start them on time it may be that the first five weeks for example or if it's a 15-week program for example the first five weeks may be online or the first 10 weeks may be online but we are aiming and we are hoping that at least some of the element of the pre-sessional will be on campus will be in in the uk in salford ready for you to start or ready for you to complete and start the the undergraduate program but again you know this information is accurate as of you know today uk you know this date in the uk it may be a completely different scenario tomorrow so keeping in contact um with your counselor with the university is absolutely essential at these times okay thank you yes viewers um just uh, again um we are running um virtual fair uh, in june and july month time um if you want to talk our colleagues from salford university we can arrange one-to-one -one meeting so so please contact our team uh, in kuwait office in saudi Arabia office and also in bangladesh office and myself my team based in portsmouth so uh, please contact our team. We can arrange one-to-one -one meeting with the Salford University, okay, during our uh, virtual fair session. So please, um, if you have any questions, um, you can contact our team. Even after these sessions, our team will help you any information regarding Salford. So, um, Jordan, from, from your side, any final few words before actually you finish the sessions? Okay. 
Um, I think most of it has been covered. Um, obviously, it's great to see so many people online, so many students online, and it's great to know that you are still, you do still have them, them goals and the ambitions to be coming and studying in the UK um, as soon as possible. You know, don't let this current situation get you down too much. Um, you know, it is difficult times for us all. And yes, of course, there's definitely concerns around around the safety of traveling, et cetera, as well. Um, but what I would say is UK universities across the board, not only the University of Salford, we're very supportive of our students, you know, not just when you arrive to campus, but all the way through the process as well. And working with partners like TCL Global, we do have all the information that you need to make the right decision for you, whether that is coming for the next September intake or whether that is deferring until January 2021 intake. There's lots of opportunities for you. OK, but you should still keep keep with your dreams of studying in the UK uh, and it will happen, I'm sure. Um, but just keep safe at these times and keep in contact with us. Thank you, Jordan. We have been working with the Salford University for a number of years. We have sent good number of students and we had a very positive response from the students. About Salford, the courses, the facilities and the city itself. So we strongly recommend you if you want to apply, contact our team. Our team will be able to help you. Uh, just before we finish, just a little bit overview again about the TCL Global. TCL Global established back in 2011, and we have been running this um, consultancy firm for over nine years now. And we have uh, five offices around the world. Head office based in Portsmouth, where I am based and my team based. And we have office in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. We have an office in Squid City, where it's my colleague base. And we have uh, two offices in Bangladesh, Dhaka and Silet. We are official representative of 70 UK universities. So we are the largest education consultancy firm in Southeast of, Southeast of England. So please contact our team. Our service is completely free of charge. I understand it's very difficult time for everyone and everyone at home. I'm sure um, this crisis will be over and please stay safe and home and i wish you best thank you very much for joining us today thank you thank you jordan thank you very much everybody thank you mohammed